Zombies, zombies everywhere and not a moment to think. The End Games by T. Michael Martin. 22 days. It's been 22 days since it all started. Since the virus started spreading. Since the dead started rising. Since Michael and his little brother Patrick set out alone. And somehow they've survived. Hiding as best they can whenever the sun begins to set. Looting abandoned stores for supplies. Killing the bellows. The once human, now mindless creatures that stalk them. Wishing to do nothing more than tear them limb from limb. Day by day, Michael keeps playing the game. Keeps assuring his brother of what they need to do next. To survive. For all of this to make sense. He promises him the end zone. Where they will find safety where they'll find their mother, where this living nightmare will come to a close. But the game isn't as straightforward as it seems. There are too many who refuse to play by its rules. And as the struggle of the last remaining humans wears on, no one is quite sure what to believe anymore. What story they should be telling themselves in order to survive. The End Games is a fantastic read. Both a nail-biting thriller whose zombies keep you balanced on the very edge of your chair, and yet also a fully realised novel whose characters are supremely real, who are plagued with the same damage and demons that we butt our heads up against daily. It's a super fast paced work. I haven't really read anything as quick since reading Game of Thrones. It's that... Oh, I'll stop reading just as soon as this comes to its necessary conclusion. Oh wait, oh wait, something else has happened. Oh, there's more! Oh my gosh, this is what... You get my drift. This book just doesn't let up. I read it in two sittings, and it would have been one if my oh-so-exciting life hadn't demanded I take a break to write an essay on early modern representations of commerce. An essay which, thanks to this book, has slightly few more references to slaughtering the undead than my tutors are probably used to. Another thing I really liked about this story is that you just couldn't second-guess it. Over and over again, I was sure I had this world sussed out. I was sure I'd figured out the final action on behalf of the protagonist that would make him a hero, that would bring him to safety. I was never right. Again, a comparison to George R.R. Martin, because apparently I'm Westeros obsessed today, but these Martins are mean authors. I mean, their books are brilliant, but they're constantly presenting you with ways that things could be wrapped up all nice and neatly, ways that the story could have a happy ending, and then the cage comes down. Do, do, do you want this? Do you, uh, oh, no, no, none for you, no. There are no awkward lulls in this story. No way you just think the author's trying to keep you busy while he resharpens his pencils. All the backstory's there, all the characters are brilliant with it, but it's perfectly interlaced into the story, into the action. If you want a book that just keeps going, this will be your friend. I think there were maybe two points, each of which lasted four pages at most, at which I could stop and let out that breath I hadn't realised I'd been holding. This book was honestly scary, because there was no safety net. The whole way through, Michael was attempting to make a narrative of sense. This shouldn't have had to fall to him. This is the job of the government, the doctors, the adults. They're no longer here. Ultimately, there is no sense to what's happening. There is no figure held up as in control and knowing what they're doing. I remember when I first read Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Hugely sleep deprived, I exhaustedly flicked those last few pages to that lightning struck tower. Dumbledore's death shook me. Dumbledore's death was ultimately what made that last book scary and unsafe. Because when Harry had fought Voldemort before, even though it was Harry who was fighting Voldemort, there was a sense that Dumbledore, wise and mysterious sage that he was, had it all under control. That this was all some big plan that Harry was part of, that would all work out eventually. In the end games, we get the situation as it really is, only magnified a thousandfold. Because those parents and those teachers and those others who are normally in charge have all been swept away by these unstoppable monsters. You can hope that there's some greater force out there that's in control, that's got a plan. You can believe, but 
you can never truly know. I will say I don't normally read thrillers or horror as much as I do other genres and part of the reason for this is that I often find their male protagonists unrealistic or unrelatable. I feel the end games takes the good qualities of those genres, the action and the suspense, and combines it with more. Michael is a great character. He's a fantastic hero to rally behind and yet he's not masculine to the expense of the emotive. His relationship with his brother founds everything and this novel works because of it. Finally, the element of this novel I liked most, the element I felt transcended genre, was the game. The accusations put to various characters throughout of lying and the question of where they founded their hopes and beliefs. I felt that underneath the exciting zombie casing, what this book ultimately presented was the narrativization of life. The stories we make and take to understand and survive. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. I would love to hear what you think in the comments down below. Do you like the sound of the end games? Do you like zombie novels in general? Do you think you might read this one? Before you leave, I've got some exciting extra information to pass on to you. In the video description down below, I'm gonna link to some places you can buy the book if you want, as I always do. But I'm also gonna link to some extra information which you'll love if you're really excited to get your hands on the end games. Firstly, T. Michael Martin has a YouTube channel of his very own. I've been watching his videos from almost the beginning and they're fantastic to watch, really well thought out, just the sentiment in them can be so beautiful. Definitely go check it out. He's also at the moment running a stupendous competition. I think there are the opportunities to win signed books for life, uh, pages from the original manuscript or a character named after yourself, so definitely go check that one out. Secondly, two of my favourite YouTubers, Elma Fye and Briley, have also made videos about the end game, so maybe check those out if you want to find out more. And third and finally, the first three chapters of this book are available to read for free online, so you can go do that now. Anyway, can't wait to talk to you all in the comments down below. I will see you in my next video. Bye!